Have you guys ever heard of someone suffering from multiple sclerosis? Well, it is a demyelinating disease that affects your nerves. And I do have a good friend of mine who is here today to help me out with this video. So here he is. Hi guys, my name is Tyler and I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis four years ago in 2012. So I'm here today to raise some awareness for the condition. Okay, so first off, I just want to say thank you so much for Tyler for coming in today to helping us out with this video. So let letting you guys know that we have started a GoFundMe account to help raise money for Multiple Sclerosis Society of Canada. This is a charity that Tyler really likes. So in the links down below, we'll put that link down there. So that's gonna link you to the GoFundMe account. All of the money donated is gonna go to the Multiple Sclerosis Society of Canada in Tyler's name. This society receives almost no funding from the government. This is an organization dedicated to finding a cause and cure for multiple sclerosis. It would mean a lot to us if you guys can help donate anything that you can. Every little bit counts. So again, the link is down below. Go over to it and you guys can donate to help for this cause. So this is the top 10 multiple sclerosis facts you should know. Starting us off in at number 10 with what exactly is multiple sclerosis or MS for short. As I previously mentioned, it is a demyelinating disease in which the fatty tissue that protects the surrounding nerve cells become damaged. As a result of this damage, it affects the ability of some parts of the nervous system to effectively communicate which results in a wide range of signs of symptoms. Some of these symptoms can include double vision, blindness in one eye, muscle weakness, and a lack of sensation or problems with coronation. Moving into number 9 spot, let's hear from Tyler which symptoms he has and how this diagnosis has changed his life. I will occasionally get numbness in my hands, my feet, along with a loss of sensation. Some days I don't feel hot, some days I don't feel cold, some days I don't feel really anything at all. I also experience fits of tremors where I either shake visibly or will feel as though I'm shaking inside but no one can tell. I also experience debilitating headaches that make me just want to stay in bed most days. This causes me to miss work from time to time and be grumpy in general when I'm going through it. Okay, we are now at the number eight spot and let's talk about the three main categories for MS. One is the relapsing remitting MS, two, progressive MS, and the third one is progressive relapsing MS. So the first one is relapsing and remission multiple sclerosis. So the majority of the people who are diagnosed with MS go through stages of relapse and remission. Basically, a relapse is when the person experiences a flare-up or exacerbation of the symptoms and the remission stage is the period in which they don't suffer from any symptoms. A remission can last for days, weeks, or even years. However, while in remission, your immune system is still programmed to attack the myelin, so the symptoms will likely return. So let's hear from Tyler about his personal experiences with his relapse relapse in his remission. Attacks, as I like to call them, are completely unpredictable. I can feel great for long periods of time and out of nowhere an attack sneaks up on me. It's hard to exactly gauge how long an attack lasts because I can have symptoms one day and they're gone the next, only to return a day later. My most recent attack consisted of very bad headaches and tremors. This was just earlier this month, so I'm hoping that they stay gone for a while. Okay, so the second one is progressive MS, which is the rarest course of MS. It occurs only in 5% of the people diagnosed. So unlike the first stage, the symptoms becomes progressively worse. Lastly, the third one, which is progressive relapsing MS, people with this form of MS experience a steady worsening disease from the beginning. And they experience relapses with or without recovery. Now at number seven, multiple sclerosis doesn't only have a physical impact, but it also affects your cognitive skills, which is your ability to critically think. It's not uncommon for people with multiple sclerosis to suffer from problems with memory and finding the right words to express them themselves. The lack of concentration and attention is also common. Problem solving skills and your spatial orientation could be affected. Meaning, if you reach for something, you might think it's a lot closer than it is, but it's not. Okay, now moving into number six, MS is often considered as a silent disease. It's hard to distinguish if a person is diagnosed with multiple sclerosis because their signs and symptoms are not necessarily visible. For example, some of the most common symptoms are blurred vision, sensory problems, and chronic pain, which is not necessarily physical noticeable. Multiple sclerosis is also called a silent disease because even during a remission
mission states the disease still continues to progress. So my question to Tyler is, I'm sure most of you guys want to know is how did you get diagnosed and were there a lot of tests that you had to go through? Those were some great questions Landon and hopefully I can answer those for everyone now. I'd gone to the hospital because my feet began to tingle and become numb. I was playing rugby that summer which is a very physical game so I wasn't sure if I had a pinched nerve or something. They gave me blood tests and just watched the way I would walk and move around. The doctor told me that everything came back normal and that I would have to schedule to see a specialist. I had an appointment with a neurologist about two weeks later and in that two weeks the numbness had spread from my feet to just up under my neck. I had absolutely no sensation from my neck down. I could move around, but it was very odd because I couldn't feel what I was doing. I had to watch every step I would take because I couldn't physically feel my feet hitting the floor. Due to the severity of the progression, I was admitted to the hospital for a week while they put me on a steroid to regain strength and run tests. I underwent many, many blood tests and a few MRI and x-ray tests. At the end of the week, my neurologist informed me that I have multiple sclerosis and the things I was experiencing were stemming from a lesion or inflammation in my brain and on my spinal cord. I didn't know a lot about MS at the time, but I remember being scared. All I knew was that MS was forever. I had no idea what it meant for my future, I had no idea how I was going to feel in the next few days. I remember hoping that I had a mass or something that could be removed instead so that it would all be over. One procedure and it was back to being normal. Back to the point about MS being an invisible disease. It really is. I've always been athletic. I'm six foot five, 270 pounds. I played rugby, basketball, football, and almost every other sport you can imagine. I've had days where I felt so incredibly weak that I wasn't able to give my seat to an old lady on a bus because I physically could not get up. I felt glares and felt like I was being judged based on the way I look, unbeknownst to everyone that I was dealing with something that they just couldn't see. Alright, number five, so currently there is no cure for MS, however there are medications that can alleviate the symptoms. So let's hear from Tyler what his doctors recommended him to try and if any of these things have worked. The first medication I took in 2012 was called Rebif. It was an injection that I would take three times a week. I took the medication for a few months before I realized that I was allergic to the drug. I would experience stomach pains, headache and other flu-like symptoms just from the drugs itself. Not to mention I had to stick myself with a needle three times a week. My ejection sites would become very sore and also swell up. I had to inject myself on a cycle starting in my arm, my stomach, my leg, and my butt. The second medication I was recommended was Copaxone, which was also an injection, but I refused. I, I was still in a bit of shock from the previous drug and didn't want to experience any of the feelings again. I was without medication for a while until my doctor informed me that there was a pill being made available. I took Obagio, the pill, for about two years. It's almost impossible to determine whether or not the drugs are working because they're treating a completely random disease. The purpose of the drugs are to slow progression and delay disability and frequency of attacks, but I have no way of telling if that's happening or not. I, however, experienced attacks while on the drugs, so it's difficult to judge their effectiveness. There are many risks to the drugs. I would have to take frequent blood tests and monitor my liver and kidneys. Also your mood can be affected. Depression and suicidal thoughts were a symptom of every drug that I took. I would be open to trying other trial medications so long as it was a pill and not a needle. I'm still a bit squeamish. Okay, so just listening to all of that, it's just, it's really sad. But now let's move on to number four. Let's find out how many people are affected by this condition. Because a lot of you guys are watching, a lot of you might have it. Multiple sclerosis is the most common autoimmune disorder affecting the central nervous system. In 2013, about 2.3 million people were affected globally with rates varying widely in different regions and amount different populations. About 400,000 people have MS in the United States alone. Multiple sclerosis is the most common in Canada having 291 cases per 100,000 people. The ratio of women to men with MS is 2 to 1. If you have a parent or sibling with MS, you have about 1 to 3% chance of developing it. So it's not necessarily inherited. You can get diagnosed with MS at any age, but the most common age that people are diagnosed is between the ages of 20 and 40 years old, and of course Tyler fits into that category. So what is the cause of MS? Well, let's find that out in at number 3. Well, the causes of MS is actually the unknown. And this is why we've come together to try to spread awareness and try to raise money to the MS Society of Canada to try to figure out what MS exactly is 
so we can help cure it. However, it is believed to occur as a result of some of the combinations of genetic and environmental factors such as infectious agents. Theorists try to combine the data into likely explanations, but none have proved definitive. So we don't know what causes MS and for the research is needed to determine whether scientists or doctors can even eliminate MS. At number two, let's find out who else has MS. There are many celebrities who suffer from this. So it's a lot more common than you guys think. A lot of these celebrities have been raising awareness for the multiple sclerosis. So here are some of the celebrities that have been diagnosed with MS. Okay, so we have Montel Williams, who's a former talk show host. Jack Osborne, who is Ozzy Osbourne's son. Famous, now deceased comedian Richard Pryor. And former NHL goalie Josh Harding. Trevor Bain has MS as well. He's a 25-year-old professional race car driver. Mitt Romney, who is the governor of Massachusetts, well, his wife Anne Romney has MS. Clay Walker, who is a musician, Musical artist. Well, he was diagnosed back in 1996. We are finally at number one, so let's find out what is next for Tyler. Does having the condition like this stop you from living your life at all? This condition has definitely made me appreciate some of the more mundane tasks in life. Tying my own shoes now that I have feeling is gratifying. Uh, I try not to let anything stop me, not even this condition. Everyone is presented with hurdles in their life and I've accepted that this is mine. This is now my reality. Most days I don't even remember I have MS. I try to carry on and live my life with no reservations. I currently work in a sports management industry and I love it. If it's possible to continue on with a career, I'd be very happy. I've always dreamed of pursuing a career in policing, and if my health permits it, I see that as my plan for the future. Okay, well, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this whole video, if you guys made it to the end, and of course, Tyler for being here to raise awareness. And uh, just to have a little fun, just to prove that he actually is 6'4", I'm stuffing at all these mats. This is, this is his true height. Thanks, Lynn. <laughs>